I want to tell you a little bit about what we're doing to transform education and learning experiences for learners all over the world. So I want to start off with a with a startling fact, which is that uh, over the next 30 years, UNESCO estimates that we will educate more people than we have educated in the entirety of human history thus far. Standing here at a very transformative time in human history, and we have the ability to make uh, an impact to learners worldwide in a very deep and very transformative fashion. So the initiative that we're running is actually at the intersection of uh, the cognitive neuroscience of learning and, uh, and AI and cognitive computing itself. So at the intersection of these two rapidly emerging fields, we have an opportunity to create deeply transformative learning experiences. Uh, but first I want to tell you uh, a little bit about some of the problems and inefficiencies that exist in education today. On a daily basis, on average, we have 8,300 children who drop out of high school in the United States, which is a truly frightening number. Similarly, uh, in Europe, in countries like Spain and Portugal, uh, the unemployment rate is hovering around 20%, and it's actually higher, closer to 50% for people with newly minted college degrees. At the same time, about 27% of your employers in Europe are looking for entry-level employees and they have unfilled jobs. And so there is this massive mismatch between skills and the demand that exists for these skills. So to understand why learning isn't working, we have to understand actually how the brain learns in the first place and how the brain in fact goes through a formative phase uh, in, the, in the first 15-20 uh, years of life. So it all starts with birth. At birth, all of us, whether we are deeply technical or whether we are a business person, or whether we are a college dropout, we all have extremely sparse neuronal networks. And the brain is, in fact, uh, not very highly connected at birth. It's just born to be wired. But what happens from that point on is, as a consequence of the experiences that the brain is exposed to, it very rapidly grows neuronal networks, so much so that uh, at, by the age of six, it's forming around 700 neuronal networks a second. And in fact, by six, it's also the most densest it will ever be in our entire life. From the age of six onwards, the brain goes through a process called synaptic pruning, where it loses a lot of connections, and it only reinforces the connections that it thinks are important for it to function in a very efficient, energy efficient, and cognitively efficient fashion. During this entire process, when the brain is forming neuronal networks and the brain is pruning synaptic networks, you pick up languages extremely quickly in the first few years of life and beyond a certain stage, beyond 11 or 12, it's very difficult to get a native uh, level of proficiency in a language that you pick up uh, from that point on. Similarly, higher order cognitive functions like le reasoning and logic are typically have formed between the age of 6 and 14 and if you pass that period, it's very difficult to, to form these functions in a very efficient fashion. So the consequence of all this, uh, all this research in neuroscience is that if you have very poor early childhood experiences and the brain is not properly exposed to these experiences, a lot of the issues with respect to poor network growth and poor synaptic pruning happen. And this leads to all the dropouts and all the poor life experiences that people have today. And this is actually quite profound because this understanding didn't exist till very recently. The second consequence of this understanding of how the brain works is that uh, today we are at a time when there's a rapid explosion in interactivity with computing. We have touch computing, we have gesture recognition, we have dialogue with the machine. All these interactivities and modalities are possible. But the impact of these in learning is actually something that hasn't really been studied. And how does the brain react to all these new cognitive loads is actually a deep mystery. At the intersection of all these cognitive loads and, uh, and how the brain might react to them, we can actually create experiences that are truly transformative. And that's at the heart of our initiative. So to summarize and to net all of this out, uh, what we'd like to do and the initiative that we've set out to do uh, we, will basically be to understand how learning itself is changed as a consequence of all the interactivity that's present in computing today, and to then structure learning experiences with Watson uh, to deeply transform learning by leveraging things like dialogue and, and virtual reality and augmented reality, etc., and to create these learning experiences. And we will do this in partnership with, uh, with marquee providers uh, in the industry like Sesame Workshop and Apple, and create deeply transformative personalized learning experiences at scale for learners everywhere. Thank you.